Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about how to upgrade the RAM for your Apple A1186 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1. Let's get started. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. Learn a little bit more about the Apple A1186. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. Uh, first things first, uh, this is a workstation chassis. Uh, most people do use this at home as a desktop, um, and they get a little confused because they'll see uh, people that are uh, selling upgrades for it as server upgrades, and yes, it actually takes server RAM, uh, which is one of the things that when this uh, fish, uh, originally came out uh, made it so powerful was because it was using uh, server RAM and server CPUs, and it was basically just a higher quality uh, parts and product than uh, your everyday desktop. So. Uh, uh, anyhow, uh, what we're going to cover today will cover uh, the 1, 1, 2, 1, and 3, 1 as far as the uh, the memory is concerned. Um, and we're going to start with the uh, the CPUs. Okay, so there are uh, two CPU sockets. It's an LGA771 socket, uh, which means it uses Intel Xeon 5100, 5200, 5300, and 5400 series uh, CPUs. You can put in uh, a number of uh, you know really good CPUs for relatively cheap these days. Uh, realistically, I recommend uh, anything in the 53 or 54 series, um, you know, 5345, uh, 5420, uh, 5450, 5460. I mean, there's a bunch of good stuff that you that you guys can put in. Um, and since CPUs are so cheap these days, the uh, only thing I recommend is just make sure that you put thermal grease on top to just keep them cool. Uh, as far as the uh, RAM is concerned, it takes DDR2 memory. There are eight DIMM slots inside. Uh, you can use a number of different speeds. You can use uh, 667 or 800 speed. Uh, and realistically, 667 is uh, what you know, everyone uses and what was predominant for DDR2. Uh, there's a number of different sizes you can use, 1 gig, 2 gig, 4 gig, 8 gig, and that's it. That's the highest you can go. So that means that you can max out using 8 8 gigs at 64 gigabytes at 800 speed. But again, most people are going to use 667, okay? Uh, now that we know a little bit about more about the memory inside, uh, let's go ahead uh, and open it up and we'll show you how to officially upgrade it. Oh, and one last thing, there's only one type of RAM that you can use with this, this machine and it's fully buffered, which is also known as an FB DIMM. No no, you cannot use ECC registered RDIMs. You have to use fully buffered. So if you are upgrading this, just make sure you're grabbing fully buffered RAM. So I'm going to grab my ESD gear, and then we're going to show you how to physically uh, upload it and which channels to use. We'll be right back. All right, now that we have our ESD gear on, we're safe to open the machine. I do realize, and I wanted to note, that most people at home do not have ESD gear, and I totally get that. So what I would recommend is two things. One, uh, definitely don't open this up on uh, carpet, especially if you have the the, uh, the wonderful old school shaggy carpet in your house, which I love, by the way. Uh, don't open this up on carpet. It'll just attract ESD. Uh, try to open it up on a desk. And one thing I do recommend before touching any of the parts inside, you know, touch a piece of, of metal, copper, or something to try to dissipate the uh, electrostatic discharge on your hands. Because uh, again, I get it. Most people at home do not have ESD, and this is, uh, you know, not something that's in a data center. It's more realistically in a house used as a desktop. So I get that. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and pop it open. Uh, there's a latch back here, uh, which we'll show you um, at the end, and you just really pop the latch, and you're just going to lift the top up. Um, really simple. All right, now that we are in, you will notice that this is definitely an interesting design as far as uh, most of the workstations that we work on uh, are, are honestly Dell and HP, and uh, we do a lot of Apple as well, don't get me wrong, but Apple's designs are definitely a little bit different, uh, which is what makes Apple Apple, right? It's so great that they do, uh, they think differently and do different things. So um, as opposed to the, um, the memory slots or the DIMM slots being on the main motherboard, uh, what Apple has done here is they have two risers. Okay, so you'll see these two risers right here. They actually come out. So if you grab right here and lift up, and you do want to be, um, you know, pretty gentle with it because uh, you don't want to damage the board itself. You know, the board is going straight through these uh, two plastics down the line, and you just want to make sure that you're handling it gingerly. Um, you can see there's. Uh, a bunch of pins on the back that you don't want to damage, um, and those are really just soldered in stuff, so it's not like those are going into anything. You don't want to damage the leads down here. You don't want to damage any of the capacitors and resistors up here. So really, you just want to be careful as a whole. Um, so I'm going to set it down here for now. All right, and we're going to pull this one out as well. Just be gentle with it. All right, and I'll put this one right here. Okay. Um, so what I wanted to point out 
Uh, there's eight DIMM slots. Uh, realistically, this is an older machine. Uh, it, it's running on DDR2, as we mentioned, and right now at this point, DDR5 just came out, so DDR2 is definitely older. Um, not to say this is a bad machine, this is a wonderful machine, uh, but it is older. So that being said, if you are running it, I would definitely recommend maxing it out. Put in 8, 8 gigs, get it to 64 gigabytes. If you're looking to, to boost the performance, that is by far the best way to do it. Upgrading the RAM, uh, it'll make it the machine so much faster. And that's the, the, the main point of this video as a whole, to just recommend to people how to upgrade the RAM. And to also let you know that if you're looking for RAM upgrades for uh, your A1186, we would love to help you out. We have a ton of uh, 8 gig DDR2 uh, that we'd love to you know, help you upgrade this to 64 gigs. So do us a favor and email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at cloudninjas.com. We'd love the uh, opportunity to quote you and, um, and help you upgrade your machine. So, all right, well now let's go over how to actually do it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you a couple of tips that I recommend, okay? So the first tip that I always point out is if you look at this module, okay, you will notice there's a notch in the middle. This notch is known as a key. Now this key is not perfectly centered. It's off a little bit to the side. So what that means if, is you need to make sure you line it up properly, okay? If you have it flipped the wrong way, it'll be off about a quarter, or half an inch, something to that effect. And when you try to stick it in, you can actually damage the leads or damage the dim slot which would basically mean you'd have to buy a brand new riser or, or have to get a new module. Uh, none of these are, are issues that you want to run into because of a, just a simple common uh, user error. So you just need to make sure you line it up properly, okay? And another thing that I always recommend before I put my modules in, uh, personally what I like to do is I like to open all the tabs, okay? Um, it's a, a simple thing and you don't have to do it by any means, um, but I like to do it just because when I'm installing the module, I don't want the tabs to be fighting me at all, uh, potentially uh, just making it harder, and I don't want to do something silly where I damage a part or damage uh, the board. So to me, everything that I'm doing is really about just safety and keeping the parts safe and keeping the machine safe. And if it takes an extra second, I'm more than willing because I just want to make sure it's all good to go, okay? So now we've got it lined up properly. We're gonna go ahead and put it in right here. And this is the other thing I always like to point out as well. So you'll notice when you install the module, it feels like the module is you know installed, it's in there, uh, but it's definitely not properly installed. And if you were to uh, you know, turn the machine on, it would not register the module. And the reason being is just not properly seated. And this is one of the most common user errors that we see where someone thinks that they have a bad dim or a bad dim slot, and it's really just because they haven't properly seated it. So what you wanna make sure you hear is these two clicks. And when you hear those two clicks, you know that your module is fully inserted, okay? So another thing you'll notice is this tab right here versus this tab right here, how much further in it is, okay? That's because the module has been properly seated. And again, this is just such a common user error. I do it all the time where I'm, you know, rushing, I'm, I'm building a machine and, you know, I fire it on and one of the dims is saying it's bad and I just, you know, didn't, didn't get it properly seated and it's just, you know, a, a very common user error. So I always just tell people to double check if they think they have a bad dim or a bad dim slot, just rotate your dims around. And if the, the problem continues to follow a dim, well, yeah, then the dim is bad. If not, uh, it could be, you know, the dim slot was bad or just you had a, just simply a, a seating error, which again is very, very common, okay? All right, so now that we've got these first four in, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out uh, the next four, but I don't wanna waste your time, so we're gonna fast forward and be right back. All right, now we've got it completely maxed out. We've got 64 gigs of RAM. Before, we only had 16, so this is gonna be a huge boost in performance. We just quadrupled the RAM, so I'm pretty excited to put it back in and get everything running. Uh, one thing I did wanna note, you at home might be looking at these modules thinking that the, the heat shield on top of the module is different. This is technically uh, what an Apple uh, heat shield looks like. Um, pretty cool design, like everything else, Apple, it's always got a cool design compared to everything else, but it, and it is a little bit, as far as like heavier and more robust than the heat shields over here, uh, but realistically, these heat shields work perfectly fine, and these are incredibly rare and tough to get for DDR2 nowadays, so we what we use is uh, 
uh, the heat shields right here and they don't have any issues. We, I mean, we literally sell tons of these and there's never been a problem. But I did want to tell you up front uh, that this is what you might see versus this. And technically, you can even take the heat shields off your old one and put them onto these if you really wanted to. Uh, not that I recommend that because you could potentially damage the module, um, but that is something that I have uh, you know, seen people do as well. So anyhow, uh, we're going to go ahead and pop the risers in now. Um, so this is something you definitely want to be careful about. Um, you need to make sure you line it up properly. I'm going to come back over here, just line it up properly, slide it in, just make sure you get it full in, boom. So you'll hear it click back into place, and uh, just like that, it, you can see it really wasn't that tough. If you're at home and you're wondering, hey, is this something that I can do? Uh, you know, I'm not a real technician. Honestly, this is one of the easiest upgrades. Uh, watching videos like this on YouTube make it very simple. Yes, you can do it. Um, it's Again, it's, it's really, really not tough. All the steps and some of the tips that we talked about, and, and you can do it with no problem. And if you are a technician, hey, this will be a walk in a park. This will be super easy. So, well, thanks for stopping by. Uh, like I said, if you need anything from us, please email us at sales at Cloud Ninjas and smash that like and smash that subscribe. Take care. Yeah.